This week's scenario is Recon from the 2016 Steamroller Packet. This scenario does not have the killbox art effect and consists of a single zone which can be controlled for one CP or dominated for two CPs after the enemy objective has been destroyed or removed from play for one CP. There are also two flags in the scenario, each can be dominated for one CP. Victory condition consists of five control points or caster assassination. Pokey here, and today I am playing Master Tormentor Morgul with a uh, pretty heavy uh, beast brick. Uh, going with two bronze backs, a gladiator for some speed, two sentries for some uh, armor, of course the beast handlers, and then a, an extoller and a wheel breaker. Hello everybody, this is Gaston, and today we have a rare sighting of Sturm. No drain, just Sturm. Uh, I decided to build a very battle group heavy list, so there's a lot of beasts in here. And I even snuck in a Meat Thresher, which we're going to talk about a little bit here as this game goes on. also have Orin Midwinter and a Totem Hunter to round out some solos. So I won the roll and elected to go first, because that's what you should do 99% of the time. And the water in front of my deployment zone is actually an Acid Pool, which is very annoying. Uh, I hate all this new impactful terrain that we're required to use. So I'm kind of deploying around it. So that way I'm going to kind of have my army go, you know, up the board on either side of it. Fortunately I'm going first, he doesn't have a lot of guns, so I think I'll be able to unpack my list just fine. Alright, for my deployment, I went ahead and kept it pretty much all central. Started with Morgul in the middle, because uh, with it being a central zone, it kind of made more sense for me to have uh, everything just kind of move up. Um, I guess my only worry is if he, he would start moving a catcher towards one of the edges. One towards one of the flags, um, but looks like she's or it's pretty uh, central. So I pretty much kept myself central, going for the zone. So that's my my game plan for this. Anybody who's ever heard me talk knows that I basically hate the meat thresher. I think it's a failure in melee. I think it's a failure in ranged, and it's a model that needs to be completely reworked or just ignored and you know leave it at home. However, you notice there's one in this list, and that is because it has the sole, sole property of being a huge base. And given that Sturm and Drang bring polarity field into the faction, and I want to have a base that can handle, that can take as good advantage of it as possible. The problem with putting on an infantry unit is all the minion infantry units suck. So they can't cover a large amount of area, they're very easy to kill, they're very easily removed. Given that you have Deflection in this list, you have Shield Guard in this list, the Meat Thresher is actually relatively difficult to remove from range, so that's the sole reason it's in this list. The primary build of this list and the thing that I was going for with Sturm and Drang is that he is the only one who is able to extend the threat of our Junior Warcasters, which is Dalian and Scarith here and Rorsh and Brine. They have the longest threat of any of the things that we have non-Arcadius in this faction, and so that's kind of what my list is built around. All right, turn one. A lot of juicy targets up front, and uh, you know it's just you know with the ability to not be able to charge some of the good stuff that's up front, um, it kind of means I'm going to have to make a very full advance, but hopefully not get myself in a, a bad position that he can he can uh, capitalize on. So I started with the gladiator. He uh, started by putting Rush up on the bronze back. He then um, tried to slam the little bacon guy in the, in the back. Um, now Morgul activates. Morgul uh, abuses the gladiator to, uh, not abuse, uh, maltreats. Maltreats the gladiator to get a point and he pretty much throws out um, Rush like, uh, like candy. So the sentries then activate, they then uh, take the, uh, the trample, they trample forward, and then they throw up their own animus of honoring. So my, my hope is that if he moves up, I can, uh, and hits him, I can hit him back, and hopefully he has anything high enough defense that I have to really worry about. Um, then of course the beast handlers advance up, and the rest of the support advances up. 
So Morgul is a very strong caster in Mark II, and he is certainly looks to be a very strong caster in Mark III as well, at least post errata. And he's he's put me in a bit of a pickle here because he's got rush and uh, abuse, which allows him to I think they have like a walking thread on his sentries of 10 inches, something crazy ridiculous like that. So this turn, um, really looking towards just kind of positioning a little bit, trying to delay, uh, do a little bit of damage, and potentially I'm really eyeing trying to kill off that agonizer there. So what we're looking to do in here is placing the Mithrusher kind of behind that wall. He takes his D 2D3 shots into agonizer. It's just, it's getting very complicated with this poor proxy base pushing things all over. This is exactly why the Mithrusher sucks. And I'm also in this bind where if I put the Mitra Thrasher there, he can just still charge the objective and then just start pinging damage off onto the Mithrusher and onto the snake. So that's just, that doesn't seem like a particularly good plan to me. So instead what we're having the snake do is we're going to bring him on up instead and he's just going to tow into the woods there so you can see three inches out and he's going to do his little spray onto the agonizer and then we're going to TK him back behind the woods so that way no one has line of sight to him. So he's moving up, he's doing his spray, he's going to boost on the agonizer, he's going to boost on Morgul, he's actually going to hit both of them which is pretty awesome, he's going to boost damage on both of them and he's going to like really do a whopping number to the agonizer. I think it does like nine points of damage to it there. And he he doesn't do nearly as well on Morgul, but hey, damage is damage, and now he's corroded. So thumbs up, Dolly and Scarith, you are already awesome. One of the things I was kind of thinking about, you know, as I go back and I look at this game, is running Dahlia up and trying to see if I could get Morgul within her control area. Because now we're having Tar come up, he's going to ancillary attack the snake, he's going to spray again. And if I had run her up there, then he would have had uh, three dice to hit, and maybe a better shot at hitting Mor uh, Morgul. He needs a ten, I believe. But I, I opted to kind of play a little bit safer and keep her back, because I can only use the terrain and polarity field to limit the amount of charges so much. And so that was kind of the goal of doing this in the first place, is to provide smaller front. I wasn't it's always nice to hit Morgul, but I wasn't necessarily going for him this go-around. But that is, you know, you go back, you watch a video, and you're like, hmm, I wonder if I could have pulled that off. The nice thing about Dolly is she's a great scenario piece in this, too, because he has almost nothing that can attack her. I think literally the only model in his entire list that can attack her is Morgul. And he's got to back up, and he's got to use a spell, and... He's going to be magic 5, she needed like an 11 to hit her, she can transfer, it's not fantastic for him at all. So up top I'm moving the Warhog there so he's hanging out behind the cloud. And then ultimately the Meat Thrusher is pretty much going to hang out where he is. He's going to sneak up a little bit and he's just going to take a couple shots on the bronze back. And the whole, if you've ever, you know, watched me play things, I, I like to, you know, just kind of put a little damage on models early on in the game because it kind of e makes things easier later on. So the Meat Thresher rolls up, he does his three shots and he misses two of them and the Shield Guard grabs the third one. So middle finger, Meat Thresher, nobody likes you. So now I'm just kind of looking at where I can TK things. I TK the Snake back behind. I actually move Polarity Shield onto my objective as it is a friendly faction model. So now he's not going to be able to charge the objective and smack the Snake with that sentry. And then we're just kind of looking, you know, where can I put Sturm, where he's going to be safe. It turns out he's just going to hang on in the back. And we're also going to move that Warhog up there, the idea behind having him there, so he can counterattack. And then we got the Battle Boar, he's moving more centrally, so we can get uh, Primal out wherever I need him to be. I was also kind of looking where I wanted to move the Totem Hunter, he, he's going to stay where he is. And then Ninja Pig is just going to back up to safety. Okay, well, I took damage on top of two, and I uh, lost the Agonizer. Not, uh, not a pleasant uh, thing. But, you know, things happen. So let's see what I can do to stop any more of those dastardly sprays. So I'm trying to uh, see if anybody can see the snake. Um, and see if, uh, you know, there's any way to knock out his uh, minion beasts 
you know, the minion heavy beasts uh, for the uh, lesser minion packs or whatever they're called. The, uh, the snake and potentially, uh, what's his name? Uh, Brine or Rorsch or whatever his name is. The big bacon. Um, and also the battle engine. Um, three very juicy targets. Um, this is kind of where I kind of wish uh, Morgul was potentially Fury 7. Just so I could uh, have enough abuses and or rushes to get where I needed to get. Um, so now I'm trying to see if the se uh, the sentry over there can actually get to his battle engine. Uh, so I got to figure it up, you know, with uh, rush and abuse. Uh, see if he can get to where he needs to. So the gladiator moves over, puts rush on the... Gladiator, right not the Gladiator, I'm sorry, he, uh, he's the one that cast it, he put it on the bronze back. Um, my hope is that I'll be able to get that bronze back through the forest and hopefully take out that snake. Um, and in my grand scheme of things, I had everything mapped out to where I'd be able to take the snake, the pig, and the battle engine uh, with the two sentries and the bronze back. Um, unfortunately, I can only cast Rush off the Gladiator once, and then, you know, the Abuse or Indoor Rush on the, on my caster. So it's kind of a kind of a weird thing to try to figure out. So I start passing out. I activate my caster. He starts doing the things he needs to do. Um, you know, the Abuses, the Rushes, and advances up because well I need to make sure things are still in my control area when they get to where they need to get to um, I, I realize that the sentry will not be in Morgul's control area if it goes after the pig so you know my thought is well if I run the will breaker up the will breaker will get close enough to keep it in his command range so it can rile it up because you know, I'll gladly let the sentry go wild for a turn if uh, if I can get it to kill off that pig. But I don't have enough fear on the table to do that, so instead I just go for the two I know I can potentially get. So I have the bronze back trample forward uh, because between a abuse and rush. No, I'm sorry, he doesn't trample yet because he just advances. Uh, but between the two of those, and he also has Puppet Master up and Enrage, um, he walks up and just starts swinging on the snake. And as you can tell, I was able to do a lot of damage without even having to rile. So now I'm measuring out for the sentry. Can the sentry actually get to the, 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 the beast there? Um, unfortunately, there is not really a way for me to get there so I'm just trying to see if there's anything else that I can potentially get to with a, with a, a slam of some sort or a, a trample and then buy attacks but unfortunately that sentry is just not going to do what I need him to do so I'm sorry he didn't put uh, put, put master up on the up on the bronze back he just put it up on the sentry so now the other sentry is now been, you know, the other beast handlers advanced up. They did enrages and all the other happy stuff. And the other sentry that has not activated advances forward and starts to swing on the battle engine. Because the last thing I want is that thing to be close enough to where it's going to be able to, to shoot me again. So I pretty much use everything I can because I get to be within one inch. So that means uh, I get all three of his initial attacks. Um, so, and that's when I used the Puppet Master instead of buying, and then, uh, you know, so now I have a bronze back and a sentry up in the front, and now I need to figure out, and I also put up uh, the sentry's animus of Henri, so if that beast comes in to hit me, I can hopefully hit it back, and then the other bronze back comes forward to hopefully be a, a deterrent 
and then the uh, soul t soul uh, the soul word backs up some because I don't really want it to get killed by the uh, totem hunter, and then the sentry just advances into the forest hoping to block out the pigs. So losing the snake last turn was pretty sad. Losing the meat thrusher uh, it probably helps me. So I managed to set myself up though, so now I'm going to be able to feat, and I'm going to be able to come in on two of his heavies, clear them out, and start the peace trade. Hopefully in my favor by having the feat, which reduces him down to Fury 1, kind of stop a lot of his counterattacks. Additionally, I'm kind of looking at things, and I've got Orin in this list, and I adore Orin. I realize he can't get, you know, he can't collect his own tokens anymore, but he starts with three, and he just randomly does useful things. He's he's just, he's something you never plan on, but something I've never regretted having in a list either. And you're looking at that bronze back there, and you're like, you know, within four inches of that bronze back's a Morgul, who this turn is not sitting on any Fury either. But... Business first, we've got a bronze back and a sentry that we're going to go ahead and kill. So we are going to stay as Sturm, and we are going to TK everybody's favorite sentry backwards. And also out of Morgul's control area. So now he's no longer going to get the shield bonus, which is nice and good for me. And the other thing that I'm kind of going for here is that I don't want to cast Primal. So I'm doing a little bit of math here to see what it will take to kill that guy off without casting Primal, so that way I'm not losing my heavies the next turn. And there's there's some risk factor in here, because, you know, Primal Primal's a really good Animus. But, like I said, I mean, when I'm down to three heavies against his five, I really need to be not frenzying. I really need to be able to maintain control of what I'm doing. So I go ahead, I move Polarity Field onto Sturm himself. And then I'm, I'm really looking at TK and the Totem Hunter as well forward. Where he's at right now, if he advances and leaps, he can get into range of Morgul. But in that advance and leap, he'll trigger a counter charge off the bronze back who will most likely kill him. So I'm not super excited about that whole idea there. So we're just kind of... I end up playing it safe and keeping the two transfers. If I had TK'd him, I would have gone down to, to zero. So we're just playing it safe, playing it conservative. So the Warhog goes up and he successfully kills himself a sentry and he does it without Primal. And now I've got Orin moving on up and he's out of counter charge, so thumbs up to him. And he's going to go ahead and zot that bronze back. He's going to boost to hit the bronze back. He's going to roll, I think, three leaps. And he gets Morgul, the objective, and the Willbreaker. So he goes ahead and he boosts on Morgul, and he's going to boost on the Willbreaker. And he does another, was, I think it was 6 damage to Morgul, so thumbs up right there. Morgul's already down to 5 health. And then he also blasts away the Willbreaker. So Orin, you're my hero. I love you. In the meantime, we're now going to go to work on this other bronze back here. Oh, and also, by the way, Sturm did pop feet, so Psych Apocalypse is in play. And what we are going to do is try to get a little bit tricky with Ninja Pig. He's going to go ahead, he's going to put his Animus of Pig Farm up on himself. And that's going to make him a Weapon Master against Living Models. And if you are not worried about hitting, you will technically do more damage with that than with Primal. And I'm just taking the risk on the hitting here. And it... In a lot of ways, it pays off for me. In a lot of ways, it gets a little dangerous. Because what's going to happen is uh, he gets his knockdown, which is awesome. So, auto-hitting problem solves itself. What gets kind of dicey here is that he goes up to 3 Fury, and the bronze back has 3 health left. And, I would, like I said, I'm trying to not frenzy, so Rorsch can only pull back 3 Fury. So what happens is they have Tar come up, we're going to Insulary attack him. That's his last attack, so, you know, there's, there's some dice risk there. But that goes ahead, that plan works absolutely perfectly. Ninja Pig, love you too. And then we're going to have something that you actually don't really get to see a lot, so I'm kind of excited to have this on camera, is we're actually going to sui him back with uh, Rorsch. So Rorsch is going to go ahead, he's going to back up, uh, and he's going to also move this as a directly towards, so I want him to not get stuck on Targ. So we're just going to sui him on back, so that way 
The sentry does not have good line of sight, three inches through the woods. And I have my feet up as well, so I don't think that the sentry can realistically kill off Brian. Worsh is uh, going to dump off his fury sometime during my opponent's turn. We'll get rid of that. And then we've got Dahlia. She's going to run on up. And she's going to run on up into the woods to get some extra defense against Morgul and contest the zone. And he is not going to be able to do a damn thing about it. That is beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Uh, all we have left now is a Totem Hunter, trying to figure out where I can put him. Like I said, the, uh, the walk and leap to get to Morgul is really appealing, but uh, it just doesn't, doesn't work with a counter charge. So ultimately, he's just going to kind of run to be on the other side of the uh, fence there. And that'll, with the feet up, I'm um, kind of counting on the bronze back not being able to beat back his way to Sturm and to threaten me. That's at least my hope. But all in all, I think I'm doing pretty well on attrition so far, and we'll see how this goes. Alright, turn three, and I lost the two beasts I thought I was going to lose. I actually thought I was going to lose another one, um, but luckily for me, he uh, I didn't push him far enough forward, so I only lost just the, the two, which still hurts, I mean, because one of them was a bronze back, uh, which has a good damage output, and then... Uh, the sentry, which is a good, you know, it has good arms, so it's going to be able to suck up some damage. Um, Gladiator is still kind of way in the back, not really able to do too much in, in the way of uh, contributing too much. Um, you know, so hopefully he will be able to uh, get up here soon and uh, get in the, in the fight somehow, not just be a, a speed buff sitting in the back. Um, but I'm thinking that, uh, if I do another commitment like I did last turn, I'm probably going to, um, have to activate my caster and do a, uh, pop his feet. Um, hopefully I can force it to where none of his beasts are going to be able to retaliate and I'll be able to put some good pressure on, on my opponent, on Gaston to, uh, to hopefully keep him back. Um, my hope right now is that I can uh, take out the objective and uh, you know do some damage there. So right now I'm just trying to figure out what needs to go where and uh, and, and uh, all the other happy stuff that goes along with it. Um, I really want to have that heavy over on the side. Because um, I feel the one that's uh, his heavy that's sitting in the swamp pit isn't going to be able to really do too much. The acid pit isn't going to be able to do too much to me because he's kind of hiding behind the uh, objective a little bit. So I'm going to start with my caster. He is going to advance. I'm more than likely going to uh, drop the uh, put abuse and rush up. On, no, I'm sorry, abuse. I think it, I think it just rush. Uh, I think I just uh, abuse the bronze back. Um, yep, I abused him, and I put up admonition on Morgul. Um, so there I am. I do that. Uh, so I abuse the gladiator. Uh, I'm sorry, maltreated the, the gladiator to get the extra. Um, point of fury because I am very sitting far far forward I did pop my feet um, so now the beast handlers do their thing and uh, you know within raging and whatnot and conditioning and now the blue beast handlers advance they basically do a, a run my uh, thought process is that uh, with prodding I will be able to get the free charge the bronze back and my hope is that I can get the um, kill off that one guy. Now, at this point in time, I'm actually thinking maybe I should put up uh, Prescience, or not Prescience, uh, whatever the Bronzeback's Animus is. Um, but then I started thinking about it, like, nope, because after that I probably push the other beast out of my control area, as well as the Bronzeback, which means that I don't get anything. 
So didn't want to do that. So I just sat there and decided to just beat on the uh, the beast until I could kill it, leaving the bronze back off to the side. Not an optimal place because you know his other heavy can come and get me, but it also means if he doesn't do anything about it, that um, you know there's a potential risk to Sturm on that side. So I'm currently under Morgul's feet, and you look at the difference in quality between feats and Sturm's feet and Morgul's feet, and you're just like, I caramba. But I have a plan because we thought ahead of this, and the reason why my battle, my entire list is so far back, and he has to come to me, is because now I can back up and I can TK him, uh, so that way I can be outside of his feet, swinging into the feet, and he'll devoid that. So what I'm doing is I'm just I'm measuring out his 10 inches, I'm measuring out my TKs, um, plotting where I want to put all of his stuff, so that way I can use my newfangled one inch reach to help myself a lot, so I can actually force and reach back in. So, Targ is kind of a little bit of an issue, so what we're going to do is eventually run him on up out of the way. That allowed me to TK the sentry backwards with any luck Ninja Pig can go kill him off. Here's where it all kind of goes wrong, where Targ runs up, he avoids a free strike, and Morgul gets his admonition because I ran him too damn far up, because I'm an idiot. So that entire plan where I was going to TK things and swing, that's all gone. That is completely gone because I managed to screw myself. So we are now on to plan B. I'm not entirely sure what that is, but it's going to involve killing Morgul. Uh, he's on true transfers, he's down to defense 16 now, and he's only got 5 health. So I think I can pull this off. So what I have doing now is Orin's coming over, he's engaging the bronze back, so no, no counter charging, and he's going to attempt to Zot Morgul. Uh, he is in the bud, I think he needs like a 7, and he misses. And this is how I learned that Morgul has dodge. So my life just got a lot, whole lot harder. I have the Totem Hunter going in, he's going to walk, he's going to leap behind Morgul, he's going to poke him with a staff, and he's going to poke him with a shield. The good news for this is that both of those attacks hit. Bad news here is that I just I, I didn't roll well on damage. So he burns a transfer on one of them and he takes a couple points of damage. So now I'm basically down to Sturm. And I want Sturm this turn. So he's able to TK himself forward, which is handy. I'm trying to run the, uh, the battle boar here in order to block in no more dodges. And what you're going to see is that, that it doesn't block him in. So I was tilted here, and now I'm going back and watching this, and the battle board doesn't make it, but Dahlia could have run. And I just, at the time of the game, I didn't see it, I was still on tilt from the dodge, and that's entirely on my bad. So now Morgul has a way of escaping. So Sturm TKs himself, he's able to walk into Morgul's back arc, so now he's mat 7, needing a 9 to hit. He takes his first boosted swing, he misses. Morgul dodges out of the way, uh, Sturm goes to... TK, and uh, he misses that, and Morgul is basically safe from assassination now. So there's, it's something where, uh, uh, I just, some bad, uh, bad decisions, bad play on my part, where I was doing, I think, pretty well on attrition, and I just let it get away from me, and now I'm going back, I'm watching the video, and I'm like, oh my gosh, I could have run Dahlia. Okay, thanks to some uh, very clever dancing and uh, bobbing and weaving and the cool rule of dodge plus admonition, I was able to get Morgul up further up to get him out of harm's way. Um, now I activate uh, the Soul Ward. He goes to take a shot at the back of uh, the caster, misses. Uh, my hope was to boost the damage, but that's not the case. It didn't happen. Uh, now the Beast Handlers activate. They uh, get close enough to enrage the Bronzeback. The Bronzeback then moves over to get on the backside of his caster, of Gaston's caster. And I just uh, 
keep the bronze back going until I am able to do enough damage to kill him off. Bronze back is a very potent killing machine, so that's a win for Scorn. So obviously I would have loved to have given the channel a Sturm and Drink victory, but shit happens and congratulations to Pokey, he did great. I thought, you know, really up until the mistakes got made that uh, there was a good plan there. I was going to be well up on attrition, Morgul was hurting pretty badly, but uh, just one thing got away from me and it cascaded into another mistake and another mistake. But you go back, you watch these videos, you're like, I could have fixed it right there. And that's how you, you know, you learn and you get better at the game. Thank you all very much for watching.